Hello viewers, hope you're all doing good. Welcome to this video. My name is Nawaz and you're watching NXA, the Linux Guy channel. In this video, we are going to see what is Elastic Beanstalk or EB, how it works, some features and benefits of Elastic Beanstalk, and on the hands-on part, we will deploy our first Elastic Beanstalk application. So let's get started. Without you. So, what is Elastic Beanstalk? Elastic Beanstalk is actually classified as platform as a service, whereas whatever I did in my previous videos, it was all infrastructure as a service, where you are responsible for provisioning the underlying infrastructure. So basically, EB provides a platform for your application where your underlying infrastructure is abstracted, so the developers can purely concentrate on their code and get their code into production as quickly as possible. So how it works, I've got my slide here, I will show you. Here it is. So you simply upload your code and Elastic Beanstalk automatically handles the deployment from capacity provisioning, load balancing to web application health monitoring and so on, right? These are some of the benefits. It is easy to get started. We have complete control over our resources. It is fully manageable and we have automatic application health monitoring which collects more than 40 key metrics. So that's quite cool. All right, so these were some theory parts. Let's move on to the practical part and wet our feet by deploying our first Elastic Beanstalk application. So I will go to my terminal. Let's head towards my play directory where I usually do stuff. If I do an ls first. So here is my index.html file. If I cat that, you will see a simple HTML file which just displays the name of my channel. Um, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip this file because in Elastic Beanstalk you have to upload your code in the form of zip or if it's a Java application, consider it as a WAR file or WAR which is basically your web archive. So I'm going to zip it. So zip, uh, let's give it a name, let's say index.zip and I want to include this file. That's nice. If I do an ls, here is my index.zip file. Uh, if I maximize my management console, here search for bean stock. I've also opened the S3 bucket, which is your simple storage service. So when you will upload your code, it will be inside a bucket, inside this S3 bucket, it will create a bucket. And inside that bucket, it will place your code. So you will see that in a minute. Let's go to Elastic Beanstalk dashboard. Um, let's create an application. So basically in Elastic Beanstalk, you create something called environment. And on top of that environment, your application runs. So let's give it a name. Um, let's say, hello world, just for the demonstration. Let's choose a platform. So these are the platforms available. I'm going to select PHP because it can render the HTML. Upload your code. So choose file. And here I will select my index.zip file. So it was successfully uploaded. If I go to my S3 and refresh this page, so you will see a bucket. So here is the bucket. If I click on this bucket, you will see that index.zip file is present here. So that's nice. If I go to my Beanstalk dashboard, yeah, that's it. That's how simple it is to create a highly available application with the use of Elastic Beanstalk. With just three steps, we have created. Uh, let's configure more options. I want to show you something. So this is the part where we basically um, configure our underlying infrastructure, right? So let's go to the top. So we are basically configuring the environment. So the configuration preset is single instance or single point of failure, which is basically it will deploy a single instance. Um, the platform is PHP 7.4. Instances, you can configure your instance details here. Capacity load balancer as you can see this part is grayed out because the environment type is single instance if i click on edit here let me show you 
so the environment type is single instance. If you select load balance, that load balancer tab will be open and you can edit your load balancer configuration. So yeah, you can select your instance type, T2 micro or anything. Uh, AMI ID, if you want to use a specific AMI, you can define it here. And we've got uh, rolling updates and deployment. So this is basically your when your when you have deployed your code and your code is live and you want to update your code or roll out to a newer version and all those rolling out strategies. I will probably cover this in my future videos. Security monitoring. We've got monitoring. As I said, it collects more than forty key metrics. Um, notification if you want to notify about any certain event you can add an email address here and it will notify you about that network this environment is not a part of VPC so I believe we can configure that database so let's see that so if your application is using any database you can configure it here we also have the option for multi availability zone database which is high availability so we've got all the database engine, we've got MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, if you want to use any instance class and storage. Um, I'm going to cancel this. Um, that's it. That's how simple it is. Let's deploy our application with a single instance. So when this application is deployed, it will be using some of the resources. And we will see what resources it consumed and I will catch you once this application is completely deployed. Alright, so the application is now ready. Uh, you can access your application by clicking this link. If I click here, um, you will see the simple application we just deployed. So let's go back and see what all thing happened. So if I click here on events, so let's see what all things happened behind the scenes, right? So it started off with creating the environment and after that it used the data which was inside our S3 bucket and it has started some environment creation. After that it has created the security group and it has created an Elastic IP as well, right? So what is Elastic IP? Basically it is your static IP. Uh, as you know what is a static IP? It won't change. So if your instance goes down, uh, it will detach that Elastic IP and attach that IP to a new instance. So that's what Elastic IP is. So it started deploying the EC2 instance um, and so on. So let's go to our EC2 dashboard and let's see what all things happen there. Um, let's move it here. So this is my EC2 dashboard here you can see one running instance and we have one elastic IP. We have two security groups. Let's check out the security group. So this is the security group. If I click here and if I could make it visible, let's say the inbound rule. So the inbound is open to the public and outbound is also open. So that's a basic security group. Um, Let's see if we have any auto scaling group configuration. Let's go to auto scaling groups. So it will have an auto scaling group because it is a highly available scenario, but with a single instance. So here you can see our auto scaling group. If I could make it visible, um, this is the activity history. So it has launched one instance, no scaling policies, instances, and we've got the monitoring of that instance. So let's go back to our environment and let's see what we can do here. So this is the environment. If I click on configuration, so this is the same thing we did there by clicking on configure more options. I kind of like the grid view. So this is the same thing we saw there earlier. So you can change the configuration on the fly logs so we can also fetch logs let's do that uh, last hundred lines if i click on download so here is my eb engine log which is my main application log and also we have access log and error log 
that's nice so that's logs health so here you can say an overall health status and also health status by instance so we've got request by second we've got 200 responses uh, status okay 300 responses which means that it has more than one possible response 400 responses which is your 404 page not found and 500 responses or 505 internal server error we've got some latencies here and we've got the load average as well so one minute five minute cp utilization based on user system in idle which is 99 percent now and also input output as well that's quite cool monitoring so yeah you can say nothing fancy just a dot dot which basically shows the environment healthy here this is the cpu utilization which is approximately 15 percent this is the network out and network in alarms we can also configure alarms um, events we just saw that so let's do something let's go to configuration and what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the instance type from single to load balance so that will be a highly available application right so we're going to deploy the application in two availability zone just as we did in our previous video so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on edit here on okay i'm going to click edit on instances if i go to configuration and on capacity if i click on edit uh, here if i select environment type single instance to load balance you will see all the tabs present to us now which was created out before so the instance minimum i want to and maximum um, let's say six because i have six availability zones um, availability zone so there is possibly a chance that when you deploy your application these instance will be deployed on the same availability zone so we don't want that instead we want a single instance on different availability zone so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select any two here so what it will do it will deploy instances on two different availability zones so minimum is two so it will deploy two instance on two different availability zone so i'm going to select my availability zone here i want to select everything scaling cooldown is six minutes let's change it to two minutes scaling triggers so this is where you define your policy um, let's do it uh, let's say if my cp utilization average or let's choose percentage if it goes beyond let's say 80 percent then scale up by one increment and if it goes below 40 percent then scale down by one instance so that's how you define your policy if i could read it correctly so when your cpu utilization average cpu utilization goes above 80 percent then increase by one increment of ec2 instance and if it goes below 40 percent decrement decrease it by one instance time-based scaling so this is basically where you can set a time-based scaling for example during market hours or during your nine to five or nine to four when the traffic is quite high so you can do that i'm not going to do this because this is just a demo so let's click on continue so here you can see now the load balancer option is now enabled let's see that if i click on edit so this is my load balancer configuration uh, i'm gonna go by default i'm not gonna play with this if you want you can play around with these values and all those things so let's apply the configuration and it will prompt me with some message it's saying migrating to a load balance environment from single instance so i confirm that so it's gonna update the application it will take some time around four to five minutes so let's wait till then 
All right, so the application is now ready. So here you can see the green color, which basically indicates that your application is healthy. If you see something like a gray color, it means it is updating some configuration or applying some changes. If you see something a red color, that means something is bad with your application. So don't worry, just wait for a bit. It will be fine. So let's go back to our events. Let's say what all happened behind the scenes. So um, I guess, um, so here is the updating environment. So it has created a new security group. It has created a load balancer. It has also added a new instance and it has updated the auto scaling group. It has added the scaling policy. It has created some CloudWatch alarms. It has updated the environment. It has deleted the Elastic IP because we no longer need it because we now have the load balancer. So that's nice if I go to my environment. So here is, you can say my application is working fine. Let's go back to our management console, um, EC2 dashboard. So here you can see two running instances now and we have one load balancer three security groups. So first let's check out the security group. Um, I believe this is the new one. Let's check out the inbound and outbound. I believe this is the new one. Um, yeah, this is the new one which has just created. So it is receiving traffic from our load balancer and outbound is all open. So that's how we configured our auto scaling group if you remember. So that's nice. Um, let's go to our load balancer. So here is my load balancer. If I could make it visible, let's see the instances. So these are the two instances. Uh, these are the availability zone one B and one C. The status is in service. That's nice. Let's see if we have any target groups target groups so we don't have any target group that's quite interesting let's see if we have any launch configuration I believe we don't have any oh we have one so that's nice so it basically used the instance as our launch configuration Auto scaling group, let's check out that. Let's see the scaling policies here. So activity history, here you will see a load balancer has been added. After that, a new instance has been deployed. Let's go to scaling policies. And here you will see our policy, a simple scaling policy, if I could do this. So when the CPU utilization is less than 40%, remove one capacity unit. And when CPU utilization is greater than 80%, add one capacity unit and it will wait for 120 seconds or two minutes before allowing another scaling activity so that's how you apply a scaling policy let's go to instance so these are the instances monitoring we've got the basic monitorings we had before let's go back to our environment here if i click on my environments this is the environment here if you go to um, monitoring so here you now can see a beautiful graph has been created it's quite nice we've got environment health the latency request cp utilization network in and network out these are some beautiful graphs i like it alarms we haven't configured that so let's go back to our application or here click on the environment let's say the running version is this we can upload and deploy a new code from here this is the platform so let's go to logs let's say the logs request logs last 100 lines um i believe this one um, 
yeah so we got logs so that's nice so that's how simple it is guys to create an elastic beanstalk application um, or to create a highly available web application using the elastic beanstalk which just includes um, maybe four to five steps in my previous video here where you seen that uh, we have configured all the underlying infrastructure we configured the ec2 instance we configured the launch configuration we configured the load balancer all those stuff was hectic and by using elastic beanstalk it just make it more simple so you can purely concentrate on the code right so yeah that's it so in the next video you will see a more simpler way of doing it by cli which just includes maybe two commands that's it so before that let's go to environments or we can go to our dashboard or click here let's terminate our application because as part of my video i usually clean up all the resources so environment action i will terminate the environment and here i have to copy the environment name so i will copy that paste it here terminate so it's terminating the environment and it will also terminate the application so let's wait till then because i want to show you how you delete this um, file which you uploaded in s3 so we have terminated the environment let's also um, delete this application as well so action um, delete application and the name of the application is this copy that paste delete so we have deleted the application as well as the environment and we are back to the page we were introduced with so let's go back to our s3 bucket before that let's go back to our management console and let's go to ec2 dashboard <coughs> let's see if it has deleted every resources which it has deployed so we have nothing except one default security group so that's quite nice let's go to our s3 bucket if i go to my s3 bucket if i try to delete this i wanted to show you this if i try to delete this now um, delete it will say the bucket is not empty so this is the name of the bucket i will copy that confirm So here you see errors. If I click here, you will say operation failed, delete bucket failed. So if I view details, basically uh, when your bucket is, has been created, it has also applied a policy for preventing it from the accidental termination. So you have to go inside the bucket. And here in permissions, click on bucket policy and here you will see a policy which says effect deny for delete bucket so we have to delete this policy first so I'm going to delete this policy and let's go back to our bucket now if I click this if I delete now let's see what happens so this is the name of the bucket I will um, copy that paste confirm so it was successfully deleted yeah so that's how you delete your s3 bucket um, I guess I've covered everything in elastic beanstalk and I guess that's all I wanted to show you yeah so hope you guys fi find this video helpful if you did make sure you click that thumbs up button share it with your friends and do subscribe this channel see you guys in my next video take care bye bye